Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Today we are getting our hands dirty with Windows Server 2022. Uh, Windows Server 2022 reached its uh, general availability uh, sometime in the last couple months. Um, I've been dying to get my hands on it. Uh, as a Microsoft partner, typically we get access to all of uh, Microsoft's products with our action pack. However, they haven't put it on yet. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. I uh, did some digging today and I found out that it's available to me as part of my Visual Studio subscription. So uh, I went ahead and downloaded it. Now keep in mind that this uh, th I'm creating a series of videos which will cover everything from installing to configuring Ac Active Directory, joining member servers, and joining Windows 10 machines to the domain. Um, so you can expect quite a few videos. I might even take it a little bit further and get some stuff set up like uh, Exchange and whatnot. Now keep in mind that I have not touched Windows Server 2022 yet, so this will be my first time installing, playing with, and configuring it. So with that being said, let's get our hands dirty and uh, get this started. So to do this, I'm going to be using a VMware ESXi environment. Um, essentially, I only have a router configured as of yet. Um, this is just going to be providing internet access to the network. Um, I've created a testnet distributed vSwitch. So essentially it's a, it's a test network, um, which all the VMs will be connected to as well as the firewall. Um, I have not done any network design yet. All I've done is created a couple virtual machines, um, haven't installed anything with the exception of the uh, PFSense firewall that's providing the routing to the network. So uh, let's get started. So as you can see here, I've got uh, TNSRV01. Um, I've created this virtual machine. We'll just go to manage and take a look at the settings here. I've configured this virtual machine with eight gigs of RAM. I've got four uh, processors, 120 gig thin provisioned um, VMDK disk on my NVMe storage. Um, and I've got the uh, Windows Server 2022 ISO mounted to the CD drive, connected at power on, and it's connected to that testnet network, which has the, uh, the firewall currently running on it. So the network does have internet access. Now keep in mind that the firewall is not providing DHCP services. All it's doing is NAT and it's providing general DNS. Um, eventually, um, as we progress through the series of videos, we'll be uh, creating an Active Directory domain, in which case the domain controller will be providing the network with DHCP and DNS services. So now that we have that all configured, uh, let's get to uh, planning this network. So here you can see that we've configured uh, testnet one and we've got the name of the firewall, the router and the local area NIC uh, IP address. And so what we're gonna do is just part of the planning, we're going to create uh, TNSRV01 entry, which is going to be our primary AD Windows Server 2022 instance. Um, this is going to be configured with the LAN IP of 192.168.10.10. It's going to be on the 24 network with the subnet of 255.255.255.0. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, power on that virtual machine. The uh, installer should kick off because it's already mounted. And here's the installer. So it looks pretty familiar. This is pretty close to the Windows 10 installer, which is what you'd expect considering that it's probably built off the same NT base. We're just gonna go ahead and choose that we do not have a product key right now. Now, eventually I am going to be activating these instances for testing and demo purposes. So uh, I'm planning on using a data center key. Oh, and actually, <laughs> I almost made a mix up there. So you'll notice that there's two different versions of Windows Server 2022 standard. There's uh, desktop experience and then the normal, and then same thing with the data center. There's the normal and then the desktop experience. Now, as per the description that we almost missed, um, the recommended, I'm assuming, is very similar to Windows Server Core. It omits most of the graphical environment. You manage it with a command prompt or PowerShell or remotely with Windows Admin Center. Now, just to get started with Windows Server 2022, we're not going to be doing Server Core. We're gonna be doing the full desktop experience just to make it easy. Oh, 
we're going to go ahead and accept the terms of custom install. We're going to choose the unprovisioned space on the hard drive, hit next. And at this point, we are now installing onto the disk. And I'm probably going to go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to sit and wait through this. Alrighty, so it's now uh, we just rebooted after installing the operating system and it's asking us to choose a administrator password. Now most of you will probably already know this, but the administrator account is the top level account for the uh, uh, Windows Server instance. This is not a password that you want to forget. This is also a password that you want to make very strong because it has full access to the entire system. And it looks like that's it. So we'll just do a control delete. And we'll log in using the password that we created. And of course, we got the good old Windows Server Manager popping up on login. So we're just going to dismiss this message box. And that's it. We've officially booted into Windows Server 2022. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, change the computer name to TN-SRV01. And just for, actually, let me redo that so you can watch it. So the way that I get in there is I click on start and I type in advanced system settings. And then you can head over to the computer name tab, hit change to change the name of the computer. And we're going to change it to TNSRV01. This of course will require a restart. Now the next steps after doing this is that uh, since this is a virtual machine, we need to install VMware tools. So that's gonna be our next step. And then after that, we'll be configuring the IP address. Now, just jumping into the server manager here, essentially the server manager, you can manage the system that it's currently running on. You can also add other servers that are on the network into the server manager dashboard. This allows you to configure, add or remove features or roles to this server, to the other servers that you have it configured with. Um, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Once you install those roles as well, like for example, if you install the uh, Windows File Share role, you can actually go into the server manager and use it to create shares and a whole bunch of stuff. So it's uh, not too bad. I actually ignored it for, for years and years and years, but uh, it actually comes in handy. Now, the one thing that is a little bit annoying is that off of a default install, it starts on each run. So what you can do is once it starts up, you can go to, uh, I believe it is Manage, Server Manager Properties, and then you can click on do not start server manager automatically at login and that will stop it from starting on boot now if by chance you do want to get back in there you can just go to start type in server manager and you are good to go to get back in there so now that the machine's restarted we've set the computer name our next step is going to be to install vmware tools to get that nic online what we do is we uh, just go to vmrc manage install vmware tools and this is only because I'm running this on an ESXi server. If you were running this on bare metal, chances are it would already have the drivers, or you would have to install the specific vendors um, for your specific hardware um, if they weren't automatically pre-installed with Windows Server. We'll just go ahead and do a typical install. 
And so what this does is the VMware tools, it installs various VMware drivers that are required, graphic drivers, uh, keyboard drivers, mouse drivers, um, NIC drivers, if I didn't already mention that, uh, just so that it can actually fully operate properly with the uh, ESXi hypervisor that it's running on. Now, keep in mind that some operating systems will install and it'll look like you don't need the drivers. I always highly recommend installing VMware tools on Windows instances if you can, um, because even if drivers exist, you want to have those optimized VMware tools drivers. And of course, we'll just restart once this is completed. And you'll notice this time the server manager did not automatically start. So now the next steps that we're going to be taking is to configure the NIC so that we can get internet access. So we'll right click down here and go to open network and internet settings. Once this window opens up, you'll choose ethernet on the side, change adapter options. This will bring up the network card for the network. We'll right click on that, go to properties, go to internet protocol version four TCP IPv4. And we're going to configure a static IP. In the future, this machine will be the domain controller. So we need to make sure that it has a uh, static IP configured. And as per the networking document or design guide that we've created here, we've already chosen the IP address we're gonna give it, set the subnet. The gateway, we're going to set it to the IP address of the PFSense firewall. And we'll set the DNS server for now to the PFSense firewall. Discovered a new network, we'll click yes. And just to test the internet access, we'll just go to start, run, go to google.com. And as you can see, we now have internet access. So of course the next step is going to be to install Windows updates because we need those security updates to make sure that the server stays secure. We'll go ahead and uh, just because I'm going really fast, <laughs> how you get there is going to start settings. And then once you get to the thing, you click on update and security. I have a little bit of a habit of kind of clicking really fast when I'm used to something. What's really nice about Windows Server 2022 is that the interface is almost identical to Windows 10. So the thing is that um, I thought there might have been a couple more uh, differences, but for the most part, every navigating is the same. So as you can see, this is the first time, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that I've used Server 2022. Um, but I'm zipping through the menus pretty fast. So if you have experience with Windows 10, if you have experience with older Windows Server operating systems, it should be fairly easy for you to jump in here and get going with it. And what I'll do is uh, just while we install these updates, I'm gonna shut the webcam off and we'll uh, just speed up the video footage for you. And actually while these updates install, one other thing we're gonna do is click on view optional updates. And you'll notice that there's an updated VMware display driver. Typically you might want to do this or update to a newer version of VMware tools. My version isn't the latest because I'm running ESX 6.5 on my physical hosts. Um, you could either install it this way or use the uh, updated VMware tools installer directly from VMware.com, but we'll skip this for now. And I'm thinking in a couple seconds here, the cumulative update should complete and it should prompt us to restart the server. Funny. Now this is funny. It's actually been stuck on 100% for a little while here. So we'll just open up the task manager and see if the system is actually doing something. As you can see, there's a couple processes that are using CPU. So I don't think it's frozen. Although that would be funny. One thing to note, the Windows Explorer task has a different icon. I haven't seen that for a really long time.
And so again, we'll just uh, let this sit and uh, do its thing. And just doing a quick check on the system. Again, concerned that it might have froze, <laughs> but you can see the uh, Windows Modules Installer Worker running in the background using about 25% of the CPU, which means that it's uh, installing the Windows updates right now at the moment. That took way longer than it should have, <laughs> but it completed. So I was a little bit worried that we might have found our first Windows Server 2022 bug. Anyways, the updates are completed, so we can go ahead and click on Restart now. And keep in mind, this video is just for installing and getting started with Server 2022. So um, about all we have left to do is just um, configure the time zone for the uh, time on the system. And uh, I might just poke around Server Manager a little bit with you. All right, it's just uh, restarted after the updates. We're going to log back in and now we're going to set the time zone. So we just right click on the time, go to adjust date and time, and then it opens up this window. Down here, you'll see the time zone. I'm just going to change this to mine, which is UTC minus seven. I've got the correct time now. And there we go. We have a functioning and installed Windows Server 2022 instance. Now, I promised that we would take a look at the server manager before I uh, end this video. So I mentioned before, you can install roles and features. Um, down below, you can actually see the status of installed roles and features. Um, when you first open up the server manager, you'll see this bar that goes across the top. This means that it's currently loading information from the uh, this server, as well as other servers that you might have added. Uh, on the left pane here, you've got the local server, which pulls up information about this specific server being TNSRV01. And then you also have a icon here for all servers. Um, I'll get into that in another video. One last thing that you might want to do is um, before we finish this video, oh, and you'll actually notice that it just opened up the file and storage services. So that's a role that uh, comes installed by default on this specific system, and that's why it showed up. Now, inside of local server, you may want to enable remote desktop, which can be handled right here. And we'll just allow connections to the server. And if you had other user accounts configured, you hit select users and put them in this list. Now the default administrator already has access to RDP. So we'll just leave that, hit okay. So we've enabled RDP. Uh, you can also do NIC teaming, remote management, which is already enabled. Uh, the firewall comes enabled by default. Um, the one thing that I like to turn off is the IE Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration. This always turns into a pain. So we can just click on that, set both to off and we're good to go. And so you can see we have Microsoft Windows Server 2022 Data Center version 10.0.20348 build 20348. Anyways, that concludes this video. I hope that you found the demo or guide interesting and helpful. Um, if you already haven't, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and make sure you check out my blog if you haven't before at www.stephenwagner.com. Thank you very much, guys. Have a fantastic day.